Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today's video, I'm going to show you a few of the custom brushes that I'm adding to my set uh, and also talk to you about the settings and give you some tips on how you can create your own. So uh, first, what I want to do is show you a couple of these. So uh, if we go into the brush settings here, uh, this is one I'm working on right now, like a feather brush, and it's still in uh, a work in progress. That's why I see it under testing. But as you're making modifications to it, uh, you can have this, uh, cut. I basically just duplicate one of these. So you go right click, duplicate sub tool, name it testing. Then after you get it right, you can just right click here, go to settings of sub tool, and then name it appropriately uh, for your finished brush. But this one's still a work in progress. Uh, this will be uploaded to the set as soon as I finish it. But I also want, uh, you can't really just keep repeating the same feathers. So I'm going to do a few of those to work together. Uh, scales brush, this one's pretty neat. Uh, actually, I've got to reverse the colors here on the palette. I'll actually explain why that is too. Uh, so this one's a kind of a ribbon effect and it gives you some quick scales. Uh, kind of looks like the scales off a koi fish or a fish uh, scale pattern, but good for like dragons and fantasy art creatures, things like that. So that one's pretty fun. Uh, this one's like the belly of a dragon is what I was really thinking about. And the neat thing about this it actually gave me the side scales and the belly at the same time. So what I do if I use the bracket keys to scale this up, I can also colorize this at the same time. Uh, let's try something like this. And then, you know, I got to focus on making it smaller and then slowly widen out. And that takes a few tries, uh, but, but you can also distort it. So always remember that, that you can just distort it to the scale that you want. But if you start to overlap this and move it each time, you can get those side scales. You know, it kind of, uh, you know, it wasn't intentional for that to happen, but it seems to work. And then you can go back in the other direction and get some from the other side. So if you're really trying to work on the perspective of it, you know, so it's not perfect. You know, you, you always want to think of these brushes as kind of a starting point, and then you're going to paint and add your effects over top, but it'll get you going. It'll get you some texture. It'll get you some effects and some ideas. Uh, brick brush, pretty, pretty simple. Um, but it's got some cool texture so you can hold shift and click and then just hold alt and drag and then move these around and hit command E. So pretty quickly you can, uh, you can get some textured bricks and you know, don't worry about them looking too perfect. You, you want some variation in there. So mess them up a bit, definitely, you know, and then take them from there and use like command shift T and you can distort those and get some perspective going rather quickly. So it's it's just a really neat way to hurry up and get a textured brick wall in just a matter of moments. Uh, and I tried to add a good amount of texture, but I did, you know I felt like I overdid it because again, you want these in some regards to just be a starting point, so they don't become too much like clip art because that's that's pretty much what they are at, um, at this point, clip art brushes. Now this one's pretty fun. Uh, again, it's a ribbon type brush, so you can kind of drag it around and create different uh, effects and shapes. I was really thinking like chainmail, so you can click, uh, shift click, and then drag a copy of it and overlap it just right. And if you want to really be uh, critical about it, uh, you can get in here and erase parts. That's where the layers are really nice because you can drag it behind the other one and then erase them to where they look like they're overlapping just the right way. And then after you do two of them, uh, you can merge them down with Command E and then repeat that process and it becomes a, you know, a lot quicker uh, after the first couple are done. So this should be a pretty uh, good brush to have. I also created another one where it's a little bit more simplistic, uh, same kind of concept, but you can kind of create your own shapes a little bit you know, more easily, you know, just go left and right. And again, these are both kind of a chain mail type brush. Uh, you can also designate the top color here you can designate both colors, but usually it works better with just the top color and you can get kind of a gold chain mail, you know, so really play around with those and see what you can come up with. Uh, rough skin. So this was uh, actually more of a kind of a leathery kind of effect, but it, it works well for skin, monsters, things like that. You can direct the texture. So if you notice, if I pull in different directions, it changes a bit. And then also scale it up and down with the bracket keys and get more and more detail. And all these brushes are very, uh, very detailed. There's just a lot of information there to work with. Monster skin. So it's the same kind of thing, but more 
um, kind of bumpy and you know more effect to it and if you notice it's got a little bit of artifacts from the edge because I use the soft edging so that you could kind of blend over top the reason I do that especially with brushes like this is I like the effect of being able to get in there and add some small details here and there so I'm not just you know so it's not too repetitive I can get in there and you know change the brush size and muck it up a bit and you know play around with it try to find some different shapes in there so that should be an interesting brush as well uh, I called this one monster skin it doesn't really look like monster skin until you start to overlap it and again use those shapes it's got a bit of transparency to it but I just thought it was kind of a cool brush and had a neat effect to it so it's almost a little bit more abstract but I think you could get some really cool uh, skin textures out of that as well and then this one is a rock texture brush and this can be helpful and, and fun to do you can get a lot of neat little rock shapes in there rock formations again scale the brush up and down play with it and you know add some of your own paint work in there I've actually got the watercolor effect set so if you see that outlining it's doing you can get rid of that if you find that distracting uh, just toggle it off right there so it's really just preference to what kind of look you're you're trying to get uh, keep in mind with any of these settings here you really want to experiment you really want to play around uh, experimentation is essential uh, with something like this because this program doesn't have the greatest documentation and the more you experiment the more you stumble upon things that's pretty much how I learned to do almost all of this uh, with some tutorials out there that were helpful uh, Brian Allen's got some good ones um, trying to think who else has led me to you know manga studio clip studio paints got a few on their sites you can check out but uh, there's really not a lot of great ones out there you have to fumble through this and, and learn by doing so just be aware of that um, and then you know some of these settings or all these settings I should say if you toggle the visibility on right there it'll actually bring it over here as a quick uh, preset or a quick ability to adjust that preset so you don't have to go into your subtool details so be aware of that uh, let's see rock texture here I, I might have showed this in a previous video uh, but this is just a bunch of like you know rubble kind of things. I don't know if I really like this one as much But you know, there's a time and a place for all these brushes You just have to play around with them now some of these that I'm going to create are going to be more painterly like you see here So the actual process of painting your own artwork again a lot of these ones that I just showed you were more for the the process of you know developing a certain look and then modifying it from there uh, but then I'm going to be also doing a lot of just straight texture brushes and stipples and uh, there's already a bunch in here. This entire set is going to be 50 when it's done. It's already to, to brush 38. I guess 39 if you count the, you know, the feathers that I'm working on there. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm bringing this one up to 50. It'll go above 50 brushes by the time it's done. But I just want you to be... Uh, aware of where it's at and what's coming out next you know and, and what brushes are available now if you've already gotten the set to go over there to my gum road and start downloading them and playing with them and you know keep in mind too to give me feedback you know when you use these brushes uh, let me know what you think of them and what you'd like to see in the next additional brushes that's really the whole purpose of what we do here like this is that you know it's like this back and forth you know so if you guys give me some good information to work with I'll try to make that happen I mean I can't say that I can make every brush that everybody wants but I can definitely try to get some of those in there and then you know just remember that after you apply these effects you can lock transparency right here you can take a soft brush uh, I usually leave one set the shadow and multiply and then I can get in here and I can start to paint in some some shadows and some variation uh, bring out certain parts of this texture and push other areas back so something like this you know, all these little highlights and details that I did aren't really meant to stay there they're just meant to kind of give you a starting point and then you can paint right through it and come up with something all on your own uh, and then if you make a really neat effect that you see as something you, you can use later that's when you create a brush of it a brush tip of it so let's say we take it to here let's say we want to bring out some of the highlights to the neck here uh, you can actually just go to a highlight brush to add glow or any of the lightning modes that you can get make sure on a lighter tone and you can get in here and just start to paint and see what you can come up with to to really bring this out a bit more now if you're really just trying to use the the um, 
tones that are already there, you can just uh, add a layer and play with the blending modes. I'll show you here in a sec. I really don't like this effect. Let me blend this back. So right now I'm painting on the layer itself, right? So the more blending I do, the more smudging around and adding effects, I'm changing the underlying part of it. The other way to do that is just to create a selection from the layer, create a layer over top, and then, you know, you got the blending modes here. They're called combined modes in uh, Mongo Studio, Clip Studio Paint. But then you can adjust this by brushing some, uh, some colors, some uh, let's go ahead and set this one to normal. So let's say I just add these highlights right across here, right? Something like this. And, you know, you can get in here, obviously, as detailed as you need. But generally, before I start painting too much, I'll test the effect. So let's say I want that, and I go over to here to, like, overlay or glow dodge or add glow. And I'll test those. But the neat thing about doing it this way is you can erase this back as much as you need to. You can blend it as much as you need to. And when you blend this way, it actually doesn't hurt the underlying texture because it's a floating layer. So this is really probably the best way if you're uh, still learning, experimenting on how you want to paint. This is probably the best way to do it because it gives you the most level of, uh, of edit. You know, so you can really play around with some different brushes. So you want to add some uh, hard edge effects in there. So you want to uh, try it brushing some things in like that and then blending them back in so you can really see the the process work up slowly and uh, kind of gauge it a bit better I think so and then after you're uh, you're content with it and you like what you've done you just hit command E and you just keep repeating this process you can leave that selection in place and whatever so lots of ways to utilize this hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you can paint and how you can create some stuff I'd love to hear your feedback and what you'd like to see uh, before the brush pack is completely finished. Keep in mind that if you get the brush pack now, you're going to get it for $4 on my Gumroad. But if you wait, it's going to jump up to 8 And as the brushes keep getting added, uh, the price will go up. Uh, so getting in now secures that you always have access to that product. All right, so that's about it. I'll bring this one to a close. And just remember, if you want the colors to line up where you can use the lighter color up on the top swatch and the darker color at the bottom swatch, you have to invert the thumbnail like you see there. And a really quick and easy way to do that is once you've designed your thumbnail, you can simply hit Command I and invert it back and forth. So you actually want it as a negative like this so that it uses those swatches like this. So it's not a really a big deal because you can just flip the colors here. But if you're wondering why, that's, that's one of the ways to do it there. All right, so I appreciate everybody tuning in and watching this video. Hopefully it's been informative. Be sure to check out the brush pack. There'll be a link in the description box below. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.